Uh, you know, I'm the director of sales engineering at Faxet. Uh, Mazi Mitra, thank you for hosting us today. Um, my second FinJS after New York last week and first time in Sweden, so it's been great. Uh, today I'm here to talk about the journey to building true multi-vendor workflows in a world of scaffolds. And we say the, the journey to multi-vendor workflows because we think that that's really the way the clients are going to build the next generation financial services firm, which is another big thing we're out talking to clients about. Now, we like to call things like OpenFin and Finsemble scaffold technologies. And the reason we do that is because it's all about taking bits of things, putting them together, and creating something new, much like a scaffold. And that's really the promise of scaffold technologies. Let me take some different things, put them together, and the solution that I build is going to be stronger than the sum of its parts. Um, at FactSet, we find that really exciting because people have been asking us for years, how do I operate my fax set on my user's desktop along with other apps that they have? And so OpenFin makes that uh, very possible. But there's a number of challenges that we've definitely seen along the way that will make getting to multi-vendor um, a big challenge. So the first one is you have different user experiences and different GUIs across apps. All those apps have different underlying data and content. Uh, there's differences in symbology. And what's the willingness of a third party to participate in a federated solution on the desktop? Now, here at FactSet, we've been dealing with this challenge ourselves for the better part of 40 years. We've built a lot of apps, we've acquired a number of firms, and we've folded them into our ecosystem. Some of you might be familiar with FactSet Directions. This was great when it came out in the 80s and 90s, um, old school, um, but it was great for its time. Later, when we moved into real time, we built this application called Marquee. Now you have widgets, you have context blasting, you're sending uh, tickers around to different components. And for a long time, these two apps lived side by side, and many users said, how, how fact are you going to put these two things together and give my users a true workflow solution that actually does real time and analytics and research? Well, this is what the modern version of that looks like. Uh, this is our FactSet web solution. It's very much the same that underpins our FactSet workstation. This is all built in modern web tech. So HTML5, Vue, React, WebSockets, all the great web tech that we're here celebrating at FinJS. Today, that powers over 90,000 users for us. Uh, we're going through deploying another 15,000 users at Bank of America. And the underlying technology supports millions of users um, through our digital solutions portals uh, that we build for retail institutions. Where we're going next with this, because we love web, is we're actually going to rebuild our entire trading ecosystem using web tech. So this is our portfolio management platform, and we're in the middle of rewriting this in HTML5. We're going to be leveraging OpenFin, so that way we can pass messages on the bus over to a compliance tool in your OMS, pass those cleared compliance trades over to your OEMS to execute, put them out on the trading desk. And when you're all done, let's flow those trades back in real time so that your PMs or other people working in FactSet can actually see those positions update in real time. So this is a multi-app, real-time ecosystem. Uh, we're going to have this out in web soon. We're very excited about what the technology will let us do. So, what are the lessons we can share as people are thinking about multi-vendor? We've built multi-component workflow solutions. What are the lessons we can take away in a world of multi-vendor? So it really starts with the, the who, the how, and the where. And the first thing is the who. Who are we targeting? What are the users? Are they analysts? Are they PMs? Are they traders? Are they risk managers? They all have different workflows. They're used to different tools. And that flows into the how. What's the UI and UX of these solutions? What's the data and content that the users need to do their job? And what's the context of passing through different panes and different applications to support those users? And how do you reuse a lot of that UI and UX if you're going to take your app and move out across multiple user classes over time? And then what's the where? Where are you deploying this to? Are you talking about a trader with their 20 screens and lots of bits? Or are we talking about analysts or PMs who are on the road, on their phones, or on their tablets, or on their laptop? All very different experiences. Now, the thing we love about scaffolds is we, we see it as a way to put the factories in the cloud. And what do we mean by factories? Well, it's all the stuff that historically you've had to bring in-house to make your applications work. Now we can have them live in the cloud, whether it's content such as your own prop content, third-party content, analytical tooling for portfolios or trades or your whole enterprise, cognitive tools that generate insights and actionable intelligence for users to go and do something next for their client, workflow solutions and services. These can all now be brought together, loosely coupled on the desktop, which is incredibly powerful. Now, when you have all these different tools at your disposal, well, that's actually sort of challenging to build something out of. If you have all the different bits and you can put them together on a scaffold, it's sort of like having a giant pile of Legos. And if you want to build something really cool, like the Millennium Falcon out of your Legos, 
That can actually be really hard unless you have a set of instructions. But in the world of multi-vendor, a lot of what we're doing here, we're all on the cutting edge. There are no instructions to build out these new solutions for your users. So if there's no directions, how are you going to do it? Well, it starts with your devs and BAs. You know what you're capable of, you know what you're using, you know where you want to go. But you need to build a team around them. First is you need to take find the right scaffold partner, whether it's OpenFin or Finsemble, or whether you want to build right on top of raw Electron. It helps to have a partner who has complete workflow solutions and content analytics that you can build into your apps. And if you don't know how to go on the digital journey yourself, if you're still stuck in a world of WPF and Windows Forms and you're trying to get to a world of web, you may need a partner like an Adaptive or a Giant Machines or a Scott Logic who can help take you on the digital journey. Once you've got your team together, who are the users that we're going after? Again, is it research? Is it traders? Is it risk? How can I bootstrap my solution and actually get to market faster and get something out in front of my users? How can I take complete workflow solutions from someone like a fact set who has complete solutions across a range of user classes and build my IP around it and get to market fast? And how do I, or how can I take advantage of, say, facts that shared symbology and data concordance services so I can make all these apps talk to each other? I don't have all the symbols in house today. I don't want to get them into my data lake. How can the bus power that for me? So with that said, let's jump into a couple quick videos of some cool things we're playing around with scaffolds today. So this first one is actually a support tool. We're rolling this out to about 1,000 of our support employees around the world. And this is built on Electron. So you launch a little Electron widget. You get this nice little pop-up in your screen. It floats on top of all your apps. And it keys right into Universal Search, which is keyed into our CRM and other data stores. So we can go and search for this Patrick Starling guy. And once I find him, I can click on his name. And I've actually blasted his context over to the support widget. Now, from there, we have a lot of tooling that still exists in browsers and websites. We've actually built a URI handler that's taking things from web portals. We're just passing a URI in here. And you'll see we're actually exposing the bus in this console window. So you can see the message that's getting passed in. And now my, my little quick launch widget, as we call it, has some extra things that have been passed over from our CRM. So it makes it very easy to bridge together the bus, web, and, and, um, and electron. Sorry, and uh, yeah. Let's move on to the next one that we have here. Next one is, we've worked on a named entity recognition service. So this is leveraging a lot of our content collection tooling that we have in-house at FactSet. So what we're doing is we're pulling up a news uh, story here from the New York Times. And we're pulling up, why is Apple the future of capitalism? And what's happening is we're actually passing the URL over to the named entity recognition service over the bus. It's parsing the story, pulling out all the identifiers, all the symbols for all the names you know, Apple and all the other entities that are uh, noted here. And then once it has that, it's going and actually jumping right into FactSet and pulling up Apple so that my user can jump right to that. They don't have to read a new story, jump into FactSet, find Apple. It's all about winning back time. Now, what if we want to do something else? What if we want to pass in text from something like a chat service or something else? Well, we can pass in something like Elon Musk is the CEO of Tesla. Take the text, pass that to the service, parse it, and start pulling things out pull up Elon Musk page directly in facts. But what if we actually want to get rid of that window, um, just let the service run behind the scenes, and we want to do something like, say you get a chat that says, talk to David Block about Microsoft. Well, we take that, we parse it, and there's actually multiple things going on here. We pull up David Locke right in Symphony. We pull up his page in Factset so you can actually see all of his recommendations and research that he's pushed out. And we can jump you right to Microsoft's page so as you're waiting for him to get back to you on Symphony, you can sit there and scrape through everything that you ever want to know about Microsoft. So it's all about creating actionable intelligence for users across multiple apps. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is something that we're putting together and we're going to release in the next few weeks. And we call it our Factset OpenFin Bootstrap Kit. The idea is we're going to take facts at web, package it with quick launch, or sorry, package it with OpenFin so you can quickly push it out there to your users. Um, it's going to use the native OpenFin container. You'll be able to take parts of facts that pop them out, move them around the screen, do all the fun stuff that OpenFin does. We're also going to expose our symbology and context passing on the bus directly. You'll be able to actually sit there, watch the bus, and see how we make use of this, and then start putting your applications on the bus and interacting with facts directly. We think this will be really cool, so once we launch it, please download it and play around with it. And this is really the core of what we're talking about in terms of helping clients build next-generation financial workflow solutions. We have FactSet as the factory 
who has the content, analytics, technology, and services to help power your different apps. You can take our apps, put them on the desktop, full apps or parts of apps, or you can take the data, put it in your data lake, your data hub, your data puddle, wherever you keep your data, build your own experiences on top of it, or have your partners come in and build experiences on top of it. If you're going back to the desktop, re or take those parts, put them on the scaffold, so now they can work right alongside the same fact set that your users already have. If you don't want the data, take it as an API, do it that way. Bring your data back into Factset where it makes sense and use our analytical tooling and all the different apps that we have there, really completing the holistic cycle. So a couple practical solutions and some closing thoughts here. First thing, that bootstrap kit, we're hoping to have that out in the next six to eight weeks. Once it's out there, we'll broadcast the word, please download it and play. Coming soon, we're gonna be launching our full trading ecosystem built on web tech, built on scaffolds. Um, next thing, we're always looking for partners, whether you're a client, whether you're another vendor, if you have solutions and you want to help build the next cool thing in this space, we're really looking for people who have practical things they want to accomplish. Please come and talk to us. And then a couple parting thoughts. Many of our users use Office, they use Excel. How does that work in a world of scaffolds? Um, how do we integrate voice, AI, and ML into these multi-vendor ecosystems? And then really, last thing, how do we take scaffolds and put them on the devices that are in our hands most of the time? So that's what I had today. Thank you guys for your time. Um, we're in the back corner in the room. Air France lost our bag with swag. It's sitting up at the airport. It just got in about two hours ago. So I'm sorry. If you come to London, we will have extra swag and we'll give you double. Um, but please do come and talk to us. We're very excited. And thanks, guys, for having us.